In this video, we're going to dive deeper into two-dimension kinematics and Fusion 360 sketching. Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and in this video, we're going to dive a bit deeper into using 2D sketching as a kinematics tool in Fusion 360. Now, we've already taken a look at this as a basic example in the previous video, and this is not intended to be a series of videos, but I am going to cover a few different topics that all relate back to suspension kinematics, mainly when we're looking at a four-bar linkage system, typically what you would see in an upper and lower A-arm on a car, but this could also be applied in many other applications. So again, we're going to start with a brand new document. This is going to be in the unit inch system, and... I, uh, again, it doesn't really matter. You can use it in whatever you want, but the concepts will still apply. So we're going to do a couple things differently this time. And last time what we did is we took a look at just the wheel moving up and down and how the linkage lengths and positions affected it. But now I want to take a look at the system as a whole, including the chassis, and talk about things like the roll center and the instantaneous center and how the link angles and things are going to affect it. The first thing that I want to do is I want to create some reference lines, and I'm going to create a vertical reference line, and I'm going to create a horizontal reference line, but I'm going to stick it right at the middle using my midpoint constraint. Then I'm going to use X on the keyboard to turn these into construction. Now, if this is too fast for you, keep in mind that I will slow down when we cover some new topics when we're talking more about suspension geometry, but at this stage in the game, I'm going to assume that you have basic knowledge of sketching in Fusion 360, and I'm not going to be covering a lot of the minute details of the basics. The next thing that I want to do is I want to create a tire. So we're going to be working on the right-hand side in the positive coordinate system, but we are going to be creating the entire thing. Once again, I'm going to create it at a slight angle, then I'm going to use D on the keyboard, making sure that we create an aligned dimension, and I'm going to set this at an 8-inch wide tire, Notice that it rescales it, and then the vertical distance again is aligned, and we're going to set this at 20 inches. Now you can obviously see that my scale is a bit wrong, so I'm going to just increase the vertical and the horizontal distance of my references, and I'm going to move this tire over. The next thing that I want to do in this case is actually use an arc, and I'm going to use a three-point arc at the bottom of this. And then I'm going to use a line, and I'm going to go from the midpoint of my line to the midpoint of this, and I make this perpendicular. Again, not a requirement. You can see that it over constrains it, but what I want to do is I just want to make this arc here, and I want to make it easy for me to control. This arc is going to represent the tire contact patch because the tire is not going to be completely flat, and this is going to help us sort of fudge the kinematics a little bit. So we're going to add an aligned dimension here. I'm going to make it very small. Let's just say half an inch. And again, these don't really matter in terms of their size, but this is going to give me something where I can create a tangent constraint with my ground plane. The next thing I need to do is I need to figure out where my suspension mounting points are going to be. Now, this can be anything. We can just simply pick some points where we want them to be. Now, in a lot of cases, especially with wider wheels, you're going to have the mounting points inside of the rim itself. For this example, I'm going to use create point. And I'm going to just place some points in here. And the lower one, I'm actually going to put on the line of the tire and the upper one here. And then I'm going to use my line tool. And I'm just going to create some internal reference lines. Again, construction. These don't need to be turned into construction, but they certainly can. This is just going to give me some internal references. So now I'm going to dimension the width here. And notice that we've got horizontal, vertical. And if I right click, I don't have an aligned option. So the way that this works in terms of dimensioning that position, it's really going to be easier if we use things like a line and we create a perpendicular line relative to the inside of our tire. Again, I'm going to convert that to construction, and this will allow me to now create an aligned dimension because it's not allowing me to do an aligned between two points. But here I can say 0.675. Again, I'm just picking a number. And then now I can create a very easy dimension I'll, I'll set this one six inches up, and now that one is locked in place relative to our tire. Now, again, the important aspect here that you always want to understand is that we are dimensioning relative 
to each component. So for example, on a car, you've got your hub and your spindle and everything is, with the exception of the fact that the wheel actually rotates, is relative or rigid mounted together. And then once we get into our suspension components, then we start to have some degrees of freedom. But we need to keep those aspects in mind. I'm just gonna set this one at, let's just do this one at six as well. And again, I'm gonna drag these dimensions internal to my wheel just because it keeps them a little bit cleaner because I'm not gonna to have to mess with them and they'll stay whenever I move this around. Also with these constraints, if they tend to get in the way, you can always uh, toggle the show constraints or show dimensions if you don't need to see them. And that'll simplify things after we get done creating our sketch. All right, so now we have our suspension mounting points. We have the arc to represent the contact patch of our tire. And now we need to create some other geometry. What I wanna do is I wanna create my chassis. And generally what we're gonna do is, is we're gonna create a very basic representation. But what I wanna do here is, I'm gonna go ahead and pull these together. I wanna make sure that I'm not creating anything that is vertical or horizontal or in relation to any other geometry. So I wanna delete these constraints. I don't want those constraints. I wanna be able to move these around because ultimately what we wanna see is this chassis be able to roll. However, there will be some relationships internal. So for example, these two are gonna be parallel. These two are gonna be equal because we're gonna have some symmetry. And then I wanna create a, a, a line that goes between the midpoints of these upper lines. I'm gonna make it construction and then I'm gonna make it perpendicular. Notice that this gives me an error. Now, if I move this around, you can see that it's still free to float around. It can rotate and it can be moved around. And this is what we want, except for we need to lock it in place. So the vertical distance, again, is gonna be aligned. Vertical distance between these two. Let's go ahead and let's think about the fact that we've got 12 inches between our suspension mounting points. And the lower one is probably gonna be horizontal or parallel with the ground, horizontal as we're looking at it in this view. But the upper one is gonna be pointing down. We want that instantaneous center to be a little bit lower. And uh, so I'm gonna just pick eight inches for now. Then I wanna add a dimension to the top here. This is gonna be, let's just say 22 inches and let's put a dimension here. Again, always make sure that they are aligned. Let's just say 16 inches. Now that they're aligned, we need to consider the location of this. We will need some sort of global reference. And the way that I'm gonna make this work is I'm gonna take that lower midpoint of our chassis and I'm gonna snap it to my vertical line. What that means is now we can still rotate, and if you hold down Control or Command, you'll override any of those persistent constraints, and we can move up and down. So this will help us understand the suspension travel as we move up and down, and also as the vehicle rolls. It's a good idea when we're sketching these to do them sort of off at an angle, so we're not stuck by accidentally going vertical or horizontal, and it lets us really understand the dimensions that we're creating. Let's go ahead and pull these in, and note that this is gonna be our suspension mounting point. Before I do this, I'm going to box select this. I'm gonna do Control C or Command C if you're on a Mac, and then I'm gonna paste this. I'm gonna just bring it over here. When I do this, what I've done is I've created a copy. However, these are on the wrong side. So I'm gonna create a vertical reference line going between these midpoints, make it construction, and now what I want to do is I want to mirror those points to the other side. So select the geometry, these two points here, select my mirror line, and we'll say okay. Because we created a copy, that means that this is not a mirror of the wheel over here. And this is important because if we just simply took everything we did on the right side and mirrored it over to the left, what that means is we're not going to get an accurate representation of things when the chassis rolls. What we want is we wanna make sure that the chassis moves as intended. Next, we're gonna create a tangent relationship between our tire contact patch arc and our horizontal reference line, which is our ground plane. Now we can start designing our suspension links. I'm gonna go from uh, this point to this point, and I'm gonna go from this point to this point. I'm gonna go here to here, and I'm gonna go here to here. Hit escape. We, we're not finished yet. You see, things are still a little crazy. So let's hit Control Z, let's undo. And let's start adding some equal constraints between these upper ones here and the lower ones here. All right, so we're pretty close. Now we need to dimension them and we need to pick where the chassis is actually gonna sit. 
So remember, I want this to be horizontal with this. I want this line to be horizontal. I'm going to temporarily make that horizontal, temporarily make this one horizontal, and that's going to sort of pick that location. And then I can move the wheels around, and then I can worry about the length of the upper arm. So with this horizontal, let's make sure that we right click and notice that we don't have driving or driven or, you know, we don't really have that aligned option like we normally do. So what we need to do at this point is we need to take this horizontal constraint that we created and we need to get rid of it. So I'm going to delete that. I'm going to delete that. And I want to dimension this. Notice that we still don't have that option for aligned. So we have to be careful when we dimension something like this because the second we go ahead and we add that horizontal dimension, as we begin to rotate through our suspension travel, it's gonna keep the length of that consistent in the horizontal dimension, which is not realistic. We, we don't have an A-arm that extends or retracts as we go through our suspension. What this does allow me to do is it allows me to figure out what the distance between our chassis and the ground is, and we can also measure this distance so that we have a good idea. So if we go from this point to this point, it's about 12 and a half inches. So we, we, we know that we're pretty close at 12 and a half inches. So I'm gonna bring the chassis down, then I'm gonna to go to my dimension tool. Now I have aligned, and I'm gonna set this at 12.5. Remember, these are equal. Now I can set the length of my upper. And if we wanna do this temporarily, what we can do is we can temporarily lock down one of our arms. And you can see that this is locked down. And we can see how that affects our sketch. You see that it's completely defined at this point. So let's undo that constraint, and let's just try to lock down this point. If we lock down this point, you can see it's also fully defining our sketch. At least this side, it looks fully defined. So let's do Control Z and let's try to rotate this. So you can see that as we rotate, this chassis is moving around. So let's take this and let's temporarily make it horizontal and see what that does for our sketch. So something in here is automatically giving us a fully defined sketch. The one on the left-hand side looks blue. It looks like it can move. And, uh, and it can move. You can see that we can move the wheel left and right. But what we don't have is we don't have a situation where we're, we're getting the kinematics that we would expect. So in order to get this to work out, we need to work on our, our mounting points, our dimensions, to make sure that everything can float around as we expect. So what I want to do is I want to note that this right here looks like it's fully defined. The wheel is at an angle here for some reason which means that some other constraint was applied. And the way that we can figure this out is if we take a look at the constraints and we select them, it'll highlight the other entities that they're applied to. So what happened somewhere along the way is we created a constraint, probably a persistent constraint, that automatically locked in the rest. So if we take a look at this equal constraint here, that's equal with this arm, that's perfect. If we delete this arm completely, it's gonna break that constraint. And you'll notice that now the wheel should be able to move. Let's go ahead and lock this point in place. Actually, you know what, that won't work because this is tangent here. Let's go ahead and lock this point in place and see if that will allow us to rotate the wheel. You can see this is automatically locking our wheel. So what I wanna do in order to fix this is I wanna take this tangency constraint and I wanna break it. That will give me a little bit more flexibility on this wheel. Now I can go back, I can put this line in, and you can see now, again, we're fully defined. We can move around, but it's saying that our sketch entities are fully defined, and there is a constraint that's locking it in place, even though this line is not fully defined. So let's go ahead and just add a dimension here. Let's make it aligned. Let's say 10.75, and then let's take a look at any other constraints that we might have added to lock this in place. So this one still has tangency. Let's go ahead and break that for now. I'm gonna select it and delete it. We wanna make sure that these upper arms are equal. And then we wanna make sure that we don't have any vertical or horizontal constraints on the chassis. We've got parallel, we've got perpendicular down here. There's another perpendicular that was added. This vertical is on our reference line. And we should be able to rotate the chassis. You can see here that we we're in a situation where I probably locked a point. Let's go ahead and unfix that, hit escape. And now the chassis should roll around. Now that things are free, now that we've 
we've broken those kinematic relationships, you'll notice that sometimes what ends up happening is we get in a situation where we accidentally drag something and it locks in place. So this is where we need to be extremely careful and we need to make sure that we break any of those constraints. And what you wanna do is when you find these and you hover over them, it's a constraint that is connecting this vertex to this horizontal line, select it, delete it. Now we should be able to pull that wheel up. All right, we're getting closer. Again, this problem is not simple. Uh, unfortunately, it does take a bit of time, but it's worth it to set a sketch up like this because it'll give you some flexibility. So now that we have it fully defined, we can move this up and down. We can grab these points. Again, it's important that we hold down control or command. We can see what happens when the vehicle rolls and we can see what happens when the chassis moves up and down and how the wheels move. It is important to note that we did stick this end vertex, this midpoint of this bottom line, we did stick it to that vertical reference line. So we're assuming that the chassis is going to be the reference coordinate system. Because we have tangency on the contact patch of the tire, those will slide in and out. There's a couple more things that we want to do in this process. We want to add some construction lines. So I'm going to just set my line type to construction. And I want to create a collinear line. I'm just going to come back to here. I'm going to repeat the process over here and then come back to here. And we're going to use collinear to make sure that these are in line with each other. I'm going to do that with this, make these collinear, make that collinear. And what you'll see is that these are the instantaneous centers of each side of our chassis. And what we want to do is we want to figure out the point at which these two intersect in the center to give us what's called our roll center. And the way that we do that is we need to take these instantaneous centers and we also need to project them across to the contact patch of the other tire. This is where it gets a little bit tricky. I'm gonna turn off my constraints and my dimensions to clean up the sketch a little bit. And I wanna to try to figure out where my contact patch is on this tire. And the way that I do this is I'm gonna to go to create, I'm gonna pick a point and I'm gonna pick a point on here, and I'm also going to make that point coincident with this. And what that means is as the tire moves around, that point will stay on my arc, but it'll also move around on my, my line here. And I'm gonna do that on both sides. This is just, this doesn't necessarily have to be a point. It can be, uh, it could be anything. It could be the end of a line, but it's important that we make sure that we have that relationship, that reference point. So again, I just did that simply because it was easier. And what I wanna do is I wanna take this, and this is going to be my instantaneous center intersection for the opposite side of the car. And in this case, it's actually crossing because we've got such a drastic angle here. So I'm gonna stick that there. We're gonna do one over here. It's gonna to come to there. Let's go ahead and step back and take a look at this. Let's uh, show and then hide constraints again. Any new constraints that we create are going to automatically be applied. I also wanna create some points at these intersections just because it's a little bit more visible. It's easier to see than just the lines ending. Let's go ahead and zoom back and take a look at this. Now, typically these instantaneous centers are going to be quite a bit farther out, but what we wanna see is we're gonna hold down control or command, and we wanna see where they're moving about, all right? And so the projection of their intersection when we're talking about this line, uh, typically the, the instantaneous center is gonna be way out here. And it's a product of the angle that we've got. We've got a fairly extreme angle on that upper section. So I'm gonna show dimensions. And I'm gonna reposition this upper arm. I'm gonna put it a bit lower. So I'm gonna say four inches on this side. It's probably gonna break. It's not gonna like that because we have to do it over here as well. Let's go ahead and do four inches over here. This could be a good way for you to see a difference between two suspension setups, but it is going to break things because those instantaneous centers, again, you can kind of see our reference lines are, they're kind of flip-flop. So let's delete those reference lines and let's make some new ones. So this should be coming to this contact point and this one should be coming to this. And where those two intersect is going to be our roll center. And typically we wanna see that that intersection is going to be uh, on this vertical line. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna create a point. 
on this line here, and I'm gonna make that point coincident with the other one so we can visually see where that intersection is. So now let's go ahead and again, hold down Control or Command, and we can see that instantaneous roll move around. Another thing to consider is that the instantaneous, or the, I'm sorry, the instantaneous are out here, the roll center, which is going to be the, uh, the intersection of those two, its relation to the center of gravity of the chassis is going to dictate, or it's going to affect, I shouldn't say dictate, it's going to affect the way in which the body rolls. So having this point be very low is going to do, um, you know, if I remember correctly, it's going to put more force into the suspension members. So like the shocks and struts and less into the arms itself, the mechanical components. If this is higher or closer to the center of gravity and there's less leverage between those two points, then what you're going to see is that the suspension arms, the upper and lower A arms, are going to be taking more of that load. And things like the shocks, you'll, you'll need less, probably less spring rate. Uh, they're going to take less of the load because of the way that it's transferred through based on the moment, the difference between this point and the center of gravity. So again, We've got it set up right now so that our chassis can move up and down and it can roll around. If you wanna take a look at just the vertical components, what we could do is we could take this point and we could make it coincident with our vertical line. And now what this means is that we're only moving vertically. And again, it's important that we hold down control or command to sort of override those persistent constraints. I am gonna come in and I'm gonna turn off my show dimensions again because they're just kind of annoying when everything's moving around. So again, control or command. The more sketch entities that we put in here, the bulkier the sketch is going to be. But we can already see at this point that when the chassis is down here, our instantaneous roll center is below the ground. It's below the wheel. And you can kind of see that as the chassis gets lower, as we're loading up, maybe braking or hitting a bump, you can see that the wheels are sort of cambering in. As we go up, they get closer to vertical. So this can kind of help us plan out the chassis movement. And again, sticking this one coincident with the vertical reference line is what is taking away our ability to roll the chassis. So if we find that, we delete it. Now that point's free to move. We can grab onto our chassis and we can roll it left and right. We can see what happens to that roll center in relation to our center of gravity. Remember that this is a very dynamic problem. So when we're talking about vehicle dynamics at this stage, we're really just slicing through the chassis and we're trying to look at it from just this section view. We're, we're really taking away the ability for the upper and lower pivot points on the chassis to be at any sort of angle. Right now we're, we're assuming that they're parallel to each other and they're perpendicular to our view, which is an assumption that we have to make in order for this to work. We're not going to be able to get that sort of advanced level of motion out of a 2D sketch. But we do now have a sketch that gives us our chassis, gives us the wheels and allows them to slide around on the ground, moving that contact point around. And this also gives us the ability to take a look at what happens when the chassis rolls in terms of what the wheels are doing. And just like in the first video, we could come in and we could add dimensions to figure out what the difference in the angle is going to be. And we can also take a look at putting that roll center, you know, we can attach it to our vertical construction line and we can see what happens when our chassis moves up and down. What happens when it's extremely loaded and we have a little bit of body roll, we can see where our instantaneous centers are and we can see where our roll center is. What happens when we're unloaded and we're sitting at our, our normal ride height Maybe depending on the car's use, you can see that we've got a little bit of negative. We, our wheels are, are tipping out. So again, these are all things that we can define. And the last thing that I want to leave you with is the fact that at this point, what we did was we mirrored or we copied and then flipped our references over here. One good way for us to make this much easier to control is to add equal constraints whenever we can. Those equal constraints can just take the place of dimensions. Or what we can do is we can double click on this dimension here and simply select the one on the right hand side. We can do the same thing over here. And what we're essentially telling the software is that inside of our modify change parameters, inside of these sketches, 
all we did was we said this dimension here, which is D14, is going to be equal to D5, and this one, D15, is equal to D6. So if we decide to lower this chassis point or the suspension mount point to, let's say, 3 inches, we can see what that does to the chassis. If we decide to change the length of this arm to 10 inches, then we can see what that does to the chassis. Now this arm has an equal constraint with this one, but this dimension has that parametric link between this dimension. So two different ways that we can control it. You don't always have geometry that you can apply an equal constraint to. Sometimes you have dimensions and then that works. So again, here we go. This is the basic setup to take a look at a 2D or a cross section of a chassis, allowing us to plan out things like the mounting positions for the upper and lower A arms on our spindle in relation to our wheel. We can take a look at how that affects things like the instantaneous centers and the roll center. We can take a look at chassis roll and we can have it move up and down. And of course, you could take the time to add driving dimensions, for example, the angle of the chassis between this vertical line and also its distance above the ground if we want to take a look and begin to start to plot these numbers. It's a very manual process, and I don't necessarily suggest it because there are tools out there that are specifically designed for this. But if you're using Fusion 360 and this is what you want to do, then by all means, here's another option. Here's something that you can do with sketches that might get you a little bit closer to get your answers. So this is probably... As far as I'm going to take the 2D sketch kinematics, at, at least when we're talking about vehicle chassis, I think at this stage we have a basic understanding of how to make it work. And the critical aspects are going to be where your dimensions and constraints are relative to each component. And when you think about a component, think about the wheel, the hub, the spindle as all being one component. Make sure that all the dimensions and constraints are internal to that. The chassis itself, make sure all those dimensions and constraints do not relate to anything grounded in the coordinate system. If you understand that aspect of it, and you understand things like align dimensions for lines that represent suspension geometry, then you should be able to set up pretty complex situations and manipulate them, make sure that all your ratios work. And then again, we don't really have a way to plot this. We can't take a look at the graph of the movement unless we do it manually with uh, driven or reference dimensions and then plot it in Excel or some spreadsheet. So at this point, I'm going to stick this, uh, this design, which is just the sketch. I'll put it in the description of the video so that you can shortcut your way to playing around with it if, uh, if you had any trouble following along. I know that this is complicated, and I could have just put this sketch up and then played with it and showed it to you. But I think understanding the process of trying to set it up and also where some of those problems come in when we end up locking our sketches how to go back and figure out how to unlock them. So if you have any questions, please let me know. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.